lot of amazing and awesome things going on at Slover. And I just want to encourage each and every one of you to continue doing what you're doing. A Cougars, go Cougars, go Cougars. So ladies, thank you very much. Jennifer and Trisha, thank you very much for the great presentation. And it's great to hear that uh, you ladies are heading off to college and have plans to do that. So God bless both of you. And uh, to the parents, thank you parents for allowing your students to be part of Colton Joint Unified School District. Thanks, have a great evening. Thank you. Great, thank you for that board member Fuentes. Any other comments? Yes, this is, this is Mrs. Sadegin. Please. Um, thank you. Thank you, Jennifer and Tricia. Now, which one of you is going, uh, applying to USC? Uh, me, Tricia Gonzalez. Trisha. Well, congratulations, Tricia. Please keep us updated on, on your pursuit, what you're pursuing. Um, and I'm glad that both of you are making plans for that the college. Um, I just want to say that, uh, um, first of all, I love the heart to heart. What a great idea. Um, to have to meet with uh, with your principal, and again, it goes right with your theme of uh, you can't smell, spell you know slower without love, and then now you have your heart to heart with your principal. Um, so I'm sure those are very very popular, um, and I I just um, love your creativity of coming up with fun activities. You know some of those activities that you mentioned I could not have thought of myself, but then once you had them up, I'm thinking, wow, that is that is a good idea. So uh, thank you for your for bringing us uh, the update and um, enjoy your, your your you know future endeavors. Thank you. Hey, any more uh, any other comments from board members? All right. Well, I, I want to echo some of the comments that were shared. It was a great presentation. Um, it's difficult during this time, obviously, of distance learning to not be on campus, not be with your friends, but you've done an incredible job um, finding ways creatively to share, to have an experience, to watch movies, to have fun, and you're making the absolute best of it. And for that, we are so grateful. Uh, obviously, we wish you well. Uh, wish you the best of luck, Tricia, with the application to USC. It's, it's nice to see, uh, certainly as a Trojan myself, if I can do anything to help, I'd be happy to. Um, and I want to thank you both for a great presentation and for remaining positive through a very difficult time. So please extend that to the other students on campus and thank your principal and your administration for all the, all the great work that they're doing. So thank you for the presentation. Mr. Flores, can I, can I just send a shout out to their ASB advisor? Absolutely. I know he's out there in, in WebEx land, but Mr. Salas has been tremendous in helping these students to get acclimated to being outside of school, but still holding it together to make sure that there are plenty of events for our students. I am always getting emails and phone calls and text messages about, can we do this? Can we do this? Can we do this? Can we do this? So they are so motivated and he's a part of that. So we definitely want to thank Mr. Salas for all that he does with his students as well in ASB. Thank you. Thank you for that. Well deserved. Thank you, Mr. Salas, for everything you do for the students. So, thank you so much, Slover Mountain. We look forward to good things and um, huge opportunities to be able to hopefully participate in a safe way. Uh, the upcoming graduations and all the wonderful celebrations we'll have as we enter the latter part of the school year. Yes, it's right around the corner. <laughs> okay, um, thank you for that. That takes us to our next item on the agenda, which is Public comment, uh, item 3.1. So at this time, I'll go ahead and defer to Ms. Joanne Medina to read our public comments for tonight's meeting. Just a reminder to everybody that's listening, uh, first of all, thank you for the public comments that have been shared. Uh, in instances where the public comments that are read may exceed the three minute limit, I want to reiterate to folks that we as the board, as well as, well as our cabinet, our administration, have complete copies of all of the emailed public comments so that even if we get cut short sometimes here because of the three minute rule, please know that we have the complete public comment available and when appropriate, as always, we will have staff reach back out and respond. So with that, I'll turn it over to Ms. Medina. Thank you, Mr. Flores. Public comment number one, Mario Sanchez, a community member. While the platform for public comments exists for the community to express our feelings and concerns, 
it is important to remember that we have appointed these individuals for the school board. If you are dissatisfied with their advocacy and leadership, remember their names on election day. Dr. Frank Miranda, Superintendent of Schools, Dan Flores, Bertha Adiging, Israel Fuentes, Pat Haro, Frankie Barra, Bernice Sandoval. Remember these names on voting day. Thank you, Mario Sanchez. Public comment number two, Elizabeth Villegas, and I'm going to have the translator take over. Ms. Cynthia Bueno. I'm not sure if you're muted, Cynthia. There it is. Hi, I'm Cynthia Bueno. I, I will be translating tonight. I have the public comment from uh, Ms. Elizabeth. I will first read it in Spanish and then uh, translate it. She said, Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Elizabeth. Escribo este correo electrónico en referencia a que van a celebrar la semana de Black Lives Matter. Estoy muy contenta de que van a informar y educar a nuestros hijos sobre este tema. Me da gusto que el distrito donde Mando a mis hijos tengan una fuerte base de inclusión a todos nuestros estudiantes. Me encanta cómo incluyen las tradiciones de mi tierra cuando hacen el altar de muertos y explican su historia. Gracias de nuevo por apoyar e incluir a todos nuestros hijos. She says, hello, good evening. My name is Elizabeth. I write this email, email in reference to the news that, will be, that you will be observing Black Lives Matter movement during the week. I am very happy that you will be informing and educating our children about this issue. I am pleased that the district where I entrust my children uh, offers a strong base of inclusion for all students. I love how you include my country's traditions when you build alt altars for the dead and explain the history. Thank you once again for supporting and including all of our children. Public comment number three. Is, I will also be translated from our translator, Cynthia. Yes, this comment says, uh, Querido Distrito, escribo este correo con la ayuda de mi nieta Gina, quien asiste a Grand Terrace High School. Estuve viendo sus calificaciones y noté el símbolo de Black Lives Matter. Honestamente, me dio un, un orgullo que finalmente estén hablando de estos temas. Tengo dos sobrinos en México que son afromexicanos. Me da tristeza la discriminación que viven día a día en su escuela donde viven. Cuando miré el símbolo en la página de internet, me dio un escalofrío de alegría y puedo decir que mi nieta asiste a un distrito que incluye a todos y nos enseña respeto. Mi hija Elizabeth me prometió encontrar el correo electrónico del Consejo Educativo para escribirles y compartir nuestra alegría. Gracias, Distrito Escolar de Colton, por apoyarnos y enseñar a nuestros hijos. And it says, Dear District, I write this email with the help of my granddaughter, Gina, who is a student at Grand Terrace High School. I was looking at her grades and noticed a Black Lives Matter symbol. Honestly, it filled me with great pride that you are finally speaking about these issues. I have two nephews who live in Mexico who happen to be Afro-Mexican, and I am so saddened by the discrimination they endure on a daily basis in their school where they live. When I saw the symbol on the school website, I shivered from sheer joy. And I can proudly say that my, grand, my granddaughter attends a school district that is inclusive of everyone and teaches us about respect. My daughter Elizabeth promised she would find the email address to the Board of Education so I can write to you and express our joy. Thank you, Colton Joint Unified School District, for supporting our teaching and teaching our, our children. And that public comment was from a parent, Guadalupe Mora. Thank you, Cynthia. Public comment number four, Jan Morrison, the teacher. Good afternoon, board members. I'd like to voice my support of the Black Lives Matter Week in CJUSD, a week of celebration as this has been needed for a long time. While we can debate the words in the theme, recognitions as these are important as it provides an opportunity to expose our students to the vast contributions of Black and African people in American society and to the world. As a teacher in this district for the last 32 years, I remember sharing not only my Afro-Caribbean culture in my classroom, but the various cultures of other ethnicities as a way of helping my students feel like a family, as well as be able to compare certain aspects of their culture with pride. 
The African community in CJUSD comprises the dysphoria represented in the faculty, staff, and students. The slogan, Black Lives Matter, comes to the world stage this summer when our society worldwide of all nationalities showed up to say enough. Things must change. CJUSD reacted appropriately with student forums and staff explorations in cultural proficiency. As an employee of CJUSD, I felt proud that our leaders were brave enough to ask the tough questions and begin to make changes for the good. The BLM week is one of those decisions that, we've, that will be an asset to the new goals of equity and cultural proficiency for CJUSD. I look forward to hearing about the student and staff experiences that come from these activities. Sincerely, Jan Morrison. Public comment number five, Tiffany Hampton, principal. Good evening, Board President Flores, board members, Superintendent Dr. Miranda, and members of the audience. I come to you as a member of the Colton Joint Unified School District African American Parent Advisory Committee and as a former elementary, middle, and high school student in the district who graduated and returned to work and advocate for all students. Members of the committee, as well as other administrators and teachers in the district, have worked extremely hard and collaboratively to ensure all students, cultures, and ethnicities are recognized and celebrated. In February 2020, our district adopted an amazing equity policy to ensure all students, regardless of labels, have a place and feel a part of this district, not only in the way they are treated, but also in the curriculum. Our content standards also demand that we introduce and teach all students about different cultures that have not been taught traditionally. This gives all students in the district the opportunity to see, to see themselves in the works they read daily in their classrooms so they can identify and feel part of this district. With all of the social injustices that arose in the spring and summer, we had the opportunity to hear the voices of elementary, middle, and high school students regarding the topic and how they felt being learners in, the, in this district. The conversations were candid and it was an eye-opening experience for the adults in the room that simply listened. Colton Joint Unified School District then adopted a Black Lives Matter resolution in September 2020 to acknowledge that, indeed, Black African American students do have a place in this district. This resolution was not written to set Black African American students above any other group, but to provide a sense of inclusion to let them know that they matter just as all other students do. Continue, continuing with this idea and written in the resolution, Black Lives Matter Week in school is being implemented as a learning experience for all students. Students will have the chance to identify with people they may not normally see in their literature or in the history text, and all students get exposure to new information that helps empower them as they move through their educational journey. Additionally, it is an opportunity for everyone to see the bridges that connect us as opposed to what may divide us highlighting similarities and not focusing on differences. All CJUSD students are unique and these differences should be celebrated by all, not keep us from interacting and learning from one another. In closing, Black Lives Matter Week in school is aligned to our district's equity policy and the Black Lives Matter resolution that our board courageously adopted in 2020 to ensure all students have a place and a home in Colton Joint Unified School District. Let's continue to stand and support the policy set forth by CJUSD and let our actions show equity and inclusion for all so we nurture a strong, unified, and prosperous community where we all have the op an opportunity to succeed, feel valued, and prosper. Public comment number six, Maurice Sivers, teacher, to whom it may concern. I am ready to have my message read into public comment at the next board tr trustees meeting. I was informed to write to this email to share my comment. My comment is as follows. As a teacher at Ruth o Harris Middle School, I am deeply supportive and happy that CJUSD has made the right decision to affirm that Black Lives do indeed matter and embrace a position of racial justice with its Black Lives Matter resolution from September 2020. I am also incredibly grateful that CJUSD has also mandated a commitment to inclusion, equity, and diversity while working to dismantle systemic oppression, bias, and inequities with their February 2020 equity policy. Often when institutions put forth statements supporting socially just causes, it can be limited in its symbolism and performativity. However, with the district-wide Black Lives Matter Week coming up, it is apparent that CJUSD is seeking to honor its Black Lives Matter resolution and equity policy through actions and not just words. 
This is the true test of the commitment to justice and equality, practicing what you preach. I am happy that CJUSD is working to practice what it preaches even in the face of pushback. Unfortunately, the reality of our community and our nation as a whole is what we are facing, not just a COVID-19 pandemic, but pandemic of white supremacy and racism. Opposition to promoting inclusion, equity, and diversity while working to dismantle systemic opp oppression and bias signifies a dire need for CJUSD to lead our community out of this ignorance, bigotry, racism, and hate. My experience as a teacher in this district has been a mixed bag, mostly because of the pain that ex exclusion, ignorance, outright hate, racism, and inequity has caused myself and my most marginalized students. It is difficult to focus on what should be considered typical schooling experiences, like challenging my kiddos in their learning, mentoring kiddos to be their best selves, engaging kiddos in content, building relationships based on trust and integrity, etc. When there is a bombardment of systemic oppression and conscience bias, hating the basic functions of education. That is why for me, there is no other alternative than to speak out in support of CJUSD's Black Lives Matter Week initiative. Mr. Maurice Sivers, I hope this message is received for the proper means for public delivery to public comment. Public comment number seven, Jackie Rainey, parent and employee. I am really excited about the upcoming Black Lives Matter Week. My daughter has been participating in the APAC meetings with me and she is leaving these meetings feeling empowered. She was so proud of herself for coming in fifth on the trivia. BLM Week is something that is empowering for these young kids. It is something that shows Black people in a positive light, especially with the negativity that was spread these last few years. Staff and students have been hearing so much negativity about BMM, BLM, which will sadly manifest itself in some way through communication, preconceived notions, and relationships of our young people in CJUSD. I am very excited that we are taking the time to turn these notions and behaviors around in many by exploring positives. It will also have a positive impact on our youth as we show them that they are more than what is seen on the news or TV show, etc. Sincerely, Jackie Rainey, proud parent of two daughters attending CJUSD and proud employee of CJUSD. Public comment number eight, Rose Smith, teacher. It is important that schools continue to celebrate Black History Month and what better way than Black Lives Matter Week so that we can shine a light on the progress made throughout this country by Black Americans. Black Lives Matter Week means a time to showcase our strength, progress, and equality in a united way, all characteristics that need to be conveyed to our students as possibilities. Rose Smith. Public comment number nine. Lisa Villa, employee. Good evening, everyone. I hope all is well and everyone has remained safe during these unprecedented times. I am addressing once again the unfair practices of our safety department. The definition of nepotism is a practice among those with the power or influence of favoring relatives or friends, especially by giving them jobs. As I have stated before, I have been an employee with the Colton School District for 30 years and have many years of experience and facts working with students as well as staff with no complaints just until recently. I have been viewed in a negative light because I have decided to speak up on behalf of my community, the students, and parents. And I knew what would come along with speaking up, which is retaliation, transfers, and consequences by our managers which the district has continually allowed despite numerous complaints from myself and some of my fellow co-workers who are not afraid. I have even, even been in briefings and meetings where my community has been looked down upon, portrayed, and talked about in a negative manner, where it does not seem as if the success of our students and community matters. Going back to the nepotism, at every countless interview I have been to, in order to get 11 or 12 month security position or even a four hour summer position, I was turned down in the job given to the security manager's friends and classmates that they were with in the law enforcement academy they attended together. Cop, my 30 years of experience with students and staff should hold some water. Nepotism should be condoned, not be condoned by management in our district. It is unfair and unethical. I've asked you before to please take a look into who is running your district. It starts at the top. 
I believe the hiring should be done by a committee consisting of different personnel and not security managers. If you know me, I am all about student success and truly care about my community. I have seen way too many students lost to drugs, prison, and even death because they ended up going down the, that wrong path and us as a district could have done more to intervene because they weren't talked to, listened to, understood, or effectively intervened appropriately. Take a look at security department managers because the department they are in charge of is crucial to the safety of our campuses. All departments are important, but the safety department is especially important. Safety is vital for our staff and students. The practicing of unfair practices such as nepotism is a trait that leads you to question the other unfair practices that have been brought to light, but nothing has been done about. Respectfully, Lisa Villa. Public comment number 10, Cecilia Hernandez, parent, to whom it may concern. It is with great pleasure that we thank you for the Black Lives Resolution Week. The week was well presented with a variety of resources that are pertinent to the education of students. We love the lessons that were provided for teachers to incorporate in their lessons, giving all students the opportunity to learn something new. We believe that by educating our students with diverse information, we will better educate them for the future. This will truly empower our community and generate positive outlooks on Black lives. Cecilia Hernandez, JBMC Parent Council. Public comment number 11, Lori Walton, teacher. Dear President Flores, Board of Trustees, Superintendent Miranda, Executive Cabinet, APAC, and virtual community participants, my name is Lori Walton. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I am a mathematics teacher at Ruth O'Harris Middle School. I am a 20 year veteran of our school district and I am a cisgender, white, female, able-bodied, healthy, over 50, Lulu to the grandchildren I share with my husband of 28 years, Rob, who are four-year-old Blake and 18-month-old Olivia, whom we haven't held since June of 2020 due to COVID-19. I use all these descriptors to highlight, to elevate, and to celebrate the value of the courageous votes taken by you, our school board, in the adoption of our first equity policy in February of 2020 and the adoption of a Black Lives Matter resolution in September 2020. Without the difficult conversations, the determination, and these bold actions, Colton Joint Unified School District would continue to operate in the fog of invisibility, which permeates our ways of being and thinking wherever flocks are not free truly free to bring their full humanity to the work of learning. Affirming identity, addressing privilege, advocating for places and spaces where all means all, and taking actions that forward the work of liberation was always going to be exactly that work. The affirmation of Black Lives through the actions of a historic first Black Lives Matter week in the CJUSD is an essential step to naming and repairing the effects of white supremacy on our on which our public school system in the United States is built. We must see this first Black History Month post CJUSD collective policy action and this historic first Black Lives Matter week through to its conclusion, no matter how uncomfortable it may feel. We must ask why symbols associated with Black power and enfranchisement cause such fear that we consider abandoning our values and principles in order to return to the safety of what is known. We must ask who was silenced when we abandon our courage and who benefits from retreating from the justice of change. We must resist the temptation of a return to a past time where we knew then and we know now. All of our children, staff, and communities did not matter. I truly believe no lives matter until Black lives do. I know the world we will leave to all of our children will be better brighter, bolder, and more loving and full of joy because on this day we started empathetically, unequivocally, that Black Lives Matter by celebrating with all possible vigor Black Lives Matter Week in the CJUSD. In community celebration with you all, Lori Walton. Public comment number 12, Diara Durham, Assistant Principal. Greetings Board President Flores, Board Members, Superintendent Dr. Miranda, and members of the public. I have been an employee of CJUSD since September 2011. 
2020-21 has been the first academic school year where the culture that I identify with has been both acknowledged and celebrated at the district level. I would like to attribute this to the change in leadership over the past few years, which has been explicitly due to the diversity in hiring practices that I hope will continue. It is imperative that our schools and school district representatives are reflective of our diverse student population at all levels. As a result, decisions have been made that are more inclusive and focused on the equity that CJUSD claims to prioritize. February 22nd through the 26th, we are scheduled to celebrate Black Lives Matter Week as indicated by the Black Lives Matter resolution the board passed last September. Rich, culturally proficient educational op opportunities that explore the depth and vastness of African American Black history for all students, K through 12, have been designed, packaged, and sent to all school sites. We look forward to expanding on opportunities like this week to enhance our curriculum so that it is more inclusive and provide authentic exposure to what we refer to as American history and redefine who or what topics are of value when it comes to public education. A CJUSD father from the two from February 09 APAC meeting challenged us to provide African American Black learning opportunities that go beyond Rosa Parks and Dr. King during Black History Month and their traditional school year, such as unpacking that African symbolism of the red, green, and yellow colors used in our traffic lights pantanent by Garrett Morgan. We encourage our CJUSD family to join our APAC to further the necessary e equity work required to increase the academic successes of our students. To our board members and executive cabinet, thank you for beginning the equity work. We are committed to generating the energy, support, and action required to both sustain and expand this change. Respectfully, Diara Durham, Colton High School Assistant Principal. Public comment number 13, Sylvia Lee, parent. To the CJUSD school board, what is your agenda? Would you say that your agenda should be making sure that all students have equality in our Colton Joint Unified School District? Would you say that your agenda should be to make sure that all children know all of America's history, good and bad? Would you say that your agenda is to make sure that Black children, as well as all children in Southern California, in San Bernardino County, or in the city of Colton know about the great contributions made in our history by Black Americans, because our history is your history too? Would you say that your agenda as school board representatives for our children is to make sure that all children feel important, valued, loved for who they are and what their culture and history is, as well as what their purpose will be and can be in the future behind them knowing where they come from? Would you say that your agenda is about showing all of our children that no one is better than anyone else and that if God does not have respect of person that neither should anyone else? Would you say that your agenda is to make sure that all children are created equal, not only in the eyes of God, but in your eyes and in their own eyes and minds as well? To that, I and others I say a resounding yes. Black History Heritage Week is important for our black children, but it is also important for all children to know and to be aware of the real and true history of America as a whole, not just the parts you want them to know. They, they all need to know how it came about, how did everyone get here and understand why there has been and still is unrest even after so many centuries have passed. There is more to black history than the usual and no disrespect to these people, Dr. Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, who by the way was not the first person who would, who would not give up her seat on a bus, and Malcolm X. For example, the inventor of rock and roll was a black woman named Sister Rosetta Tharp, not Janice Joplin. Miss Sierra Brooks was the first black female prosecutor in Louisville, Kentucky. She was a civil rights pioneer who was also the first attorney for Mohammed Ali, then Cassius Clay, for his first boxing contract. And Sarah E. Goody in 1885 became the first black woman to receive a patent for a bed that folded up into a cabinet. All children need to know the achievements that black people have made in helping to build America. This information is all very important, but especially to the black children in this joint unified school district. What are you afraid of? In the words of the first and great black baseball player in the major leagues, Jackie Robinson, what are you afraid of? Are you afraid that a black history information is being told that is will throw shade or cast a bad light upon certain people? Well, it will, but it also casts good light on black people as well as others, because our heritage will tell of what great people we are and have been 
have been through all the great castigation that we as black folks have received in this country that was literally built mostly by us and where others have taken credit for it. You want your children to know their Spanish history, hist heritage history when it comes. Thank you, Ms. Medina. We'll, we'll have to go on to the next um, public comment since that exceeds three minutes. But again, we do have a complete copy of that public comment in its entirety. Thank you. Public comment number 14, Rita Aros, teacher. Good afternoon, CJUSD board members. Once again, I'm requesting that you commit to reopening not only when it is safe. SAFE includes all staff who wish and are able to receive the vaccine to have been fully vaccinated before returning in person. I've been a teacher at CJUSD 15 years and all of those have been at Slover Mountain High School. Frankly, from my experience at Slover, I am concerned at how much equity has been taken into consideration in the application of safety protocols and how effective they will be upon returning in person. Specifically, I want to address that I do not believe our site is properly prepared to address COVID protocols in an equitable manner for staff or students. To name a few issues, old HVAC that fills into that falls into disrepair constantly, windows that are sealed shut, a school that's not considered a school site but a multi-use property for and by dis district personnel. There's a constant stream of Colton staff on our campus on a daily basis due to multiple points of entry that aren't monitored or restricted to those with the correct date key. Have any of these issues been addressed in the 11 months since we've been gone from our site? Will all employees have to enter through one point of entry into our site and sign in and out and keep track of what rooms they went into? How will we have airflow in our classrooms when district policy is closed and locked doors but our windows don't open? The CDC has stated that vaccines are not mandatory for teachers but also caution administrators to have enough substitutes. This concerns me given how our site is used. Therefore, I ask that you at least you can do as a board is commit to a safe reopening after employees have been fully vaccinated. Our students and staff deserve better. Respect, respectfully, Ms. Aros. Public comment number 15, Cynthia Rizzo, teacher. Dear Board of Education, the following message comes in hopes of shining a spotlight on the most hardworking, kind, and inv invaluable staff member on our administration team, especially as we currently are tackling the never done before virtual LPAC testing. Ms. Strowork D is simply amazing. She has become a true asset to Bloomington High School, not only as an administrator, but as a leader. As an educator, that falls under her umbrella within two departments as an English member and ELD member, I attest to her efforts and our progress at a site. BHS has found itself lacking positive staff and student morale stemming from a lack of accountability in all facets. Since the arrival of Ms. Strawork D, through the challenges have become more evident, it is through perseverance that she has not been intimidated and continues to push forward. In turn, she has begun to spread a culture of collaboration, professional development, camaraderie, and even acceptance of vulnerability through the learning process. It is with great admiration that Ms. Strobrokti's courage has inspired us to unite us as one and to really focus on accountability towards our common goal, goals of a student achievement, just as we are doing now with LPAC, no longer feeling that our English learners and their families were the minority, but important enough to seek innovative ways to make them feel inclusive. She came in with such a fierce determination to lift the spirits of our English department, as well as uplifting the ELD department, which was only recognized in name, not in community. She has since created a dedicated team of teachers, instructional assistants, and staff. The culture of collaboration is only a theory here, but something she has encouraged and supported. Mr. Workdy brings more than her expertise as an administrator to the table. With the pandemic, which has created many hardships for our students, staff, and their families, compassion is a necessary key in making everyone feel they are not alone. This pers personal connection is one that we have with our leader, which helps us all grow and want to collaborate to meet the need needs of our students. Her encouragement, support, and commitment to her title and staff has truly made all the difference for positive change on our site. Her presence is God sent and critical to our district and site, and we appreciate her very much. My best, Cynthia Rizzo. And that concludes public comment. Thank you for that, Ms. Medina. 
And again, thank you to all those who participated in public comment. We appreciate uh, the information that you share with us always. And again, where appropriate, we're happy to respond, um, have staff respond. So uh, that concludes public comment for today. We'll go ahead and go to the next item on our agenda, which is item 4.1. It's our administrative presentation. Uh, in this case, it is the 2018-19 Measure G Citizens Bond Oversight Annual uh, Oversight Committee Annual Report. I believe we do have a member of our oversight committee joining us, but first I will introduce Director Owen Chang, who helps advises the oversight committee uh, to go ahead and uh, kick off this presentation. Director Chang. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Good evening, Board President Flores, Board Member Superintendent um, uh, Miranda. Uh, tonight, in accordance with the Local School Bond Act of 2000, also known as Proposition 39, school board and districts shall form an independent bond oversight committee comprised of community members. So the primary responsibility of the Citizens Bond Oversight Committee is to ensure that the proceeds are being managed and spent in accordance with the language of the bond measure. The committee shall also report to the public annually on the proper expenditure of the bond, as well as the activities of the committee. So tonight we have with us Mr. Jimmy Villegas, the current chair of the CBOC, to formally submit their annual report for the fiscal year ending in June 30th, 2019. So at this time, I would like to turn over the presentation to Mr. Jimmy Villegas. Good evening, Board of Education. My name is Jim Villegas. I serve as the chair of the Measure G Bond Oversight Committee, along with Mr. Gary Grosich, who serves as vice chair. I have been a resident of the city of Colton for 30 years. The committee is pleased to report on the review of Measure G expenditures and the results of the independent financial performance audits for the reporting period of July 1st, 2018 through June 30th, 2019. The audit report found no instances of non-compliance and found that all generally accepted counting principles were complied with. Most importantly reported by Christy White and Associate is that the bond review was spent only on specific on in the voters ballot and board resolution of measure G. The only recommendation made is that independent audit is for the district to continue their search for members active and a bond bona fide taxpayer association. The annual report presents not only the outcome of the independent financial performance audit, but also the activities of the committee over the reporting period. According to the committee bylaws, the committee shall present to the board an annual written report, which shall include the following a statement indicating whether the district's compliance with the required of measure article 13a section 1b3 of the california constitution a summary of committee proceedings and activities for the prece preceding year no funds were used for any teacher or administrative salaries or other operating expenses prohibited by article 13a section b 1b 3a of the California Constitution. The Colton Unit Joint Unified School District Independent Citizen Board Committee submits the annual report to the Board of Education in conformance with the standards of the strict accountability in the local school constitution construction bond act of 2000, also known as Proposition 39. The committee has worked hard to ensure that the measure G funds Taxpayer money is used for those projects identified as part of the Measure G bond language and to communicate how effective this is carried out to the public during the year. No funds were used for any teachers, again, no funds were used for any teacher or administrative salaries or operating expenses. Funds were used for the permitted, for permitted purposes as specified in the voter ballot and board resolution of measurement of G. This concludes my presentation of, to the Board of Education. 
I am available for any questions that the board may have at this time. Thank you for that, uh, Mr. Villegas. Uh, I'll go ahead and start with any questions or comments from board members that you might have for Mr. Villegas. I'll share, um, Jimmy, that uh, first of all, I want to thank you for, for being with us tonight and for um, providing us with that information. Um, we do receive copies of the audit, of course, but I also appreciate the commitment that it takes to serve on the committee. I served on the committee myself for a few years before being elected to school board, and uh, the time that you give to dive into the projects, uh, tour facilities, provide input and feedback back to staff, it's something that really is important to this process because you know and as we all know um, really the impetus for many of the projects that we've seen over the years have come from our bond dollars and these bond dollars are directly derived from the taxes that our residents within the district are paying our property owners are paying and it's important that we demonstrate to them that we're being responsible with that money and that money is going to the intended purpose which are facility improvements to enhance the quality of the education at our school sites. so it doesn't go to overhead it doesn't go to uh, the administrative sites it doesn't go to the salaries uh, for personnel it, it goes truly to the uh, to the facilities and the improvements that we see across the district and we've done a lot quite frankly over the years with uh, with that money in responsible so uh, again and, and i want to thank you please thank mr grossich and the other members of the of the bond committee for their hard work uh, again during this very difficult time of covid we look forward to when we can get out on uh, on site and start meeting again so we can do those tours and um, have a little more interaction. Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, absolutely. We appreciate it. Uh, any other any other comments or questions from, from staff? Or excuse me, from board members for Mr. Villegas or for staff? All right. Well, hearing none, we'll go ahead and um, conclude that item. And again, thank you, Jimmy, for being with us this evening and, uh, and give our best to the other board members, the other committee members. Well done. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Okay, this takes us to our next item on the agenda, which are our action items, our consent items. Uh, our action items for tonight consist of items 5.1 through 5.21. There are two items that I will go ahead and um, make a note that we will pull and take up for separate considerations. Uh, that will be item 5.2 and items, item 5.3. So those I will pull. For separate consideration and i'd like to ask if there are any other items that board members would like to pull for separate consideration all right hearing none what i will do at this time is ask if there is a motion and a second to approve our action items items 5.1 through 5.21 with the exception of 5.2 and 5.3, which have been the first. Is there a motion? So moved, so move, Pat Hart. Thank you. Well, Thank you, Board Member Hart. And a second by Israel Fuentes. So you have a motion and a second. At this time, we'll call for a roll call vote. Ms. Medina. Mr. Ibarra? Yes. Mrs. Haro? Yes. Mr. Flores? Yes. Ms. Dorito Ojeda? Yes. Ms. Sandoval? Yes. Mr. Fuentes? Yes. Ms. Adigan. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for that, Ms. Medina. We'll go ahead and go to our deferred items. The first deferred item is item 5.2. And item 5.2 is uh, an item to accept nominations for the California School Board Association. Um, and we typically uh, pull this item because it does sometimes require a little bit of conversation. Uh, we are being asked as a board to nominate six uh, board members from across the, across the area here, across the, the county, to serve in the capacity as a delegate for CSBA. Uh, you have before you the names uh, and also included in that, I believe by asterisk, you see the individuals that are the incumbents. Uh, and so uh, what I'll be looking for is some direction from the board and ultimately a motion uh, to make a nomination of six names. Um, and if I, if I may, uh, I would like to, um, first of all, I'll, I'll make, well, we'll, we'll incorporate this into motion so we can take action on it. Uh, just given the makeup of the incumbents, I, I, I would like to recommend, uh, and nominate the incumbents with one exception. Um, we have, uh, right now, 
we don't necessarily have strong representation, as I see on the list of the incumbents, or I would say the East Valley, if you will, of our county. Um, and there are a number of folks from the high desert communities. And so I would like to make a substitution that we recommend nomination of the incumbents with the exception of substituting instead of Mr. Courtney from Lucerne Valley, that we recommend and nominate Mr. Michael Snellings from Ukaipa Calabasa Joint Unified School District. You know, Mr. Snellings well from his time, obviously with our district, but he represents uh, a district that's within our area and certainly part of Cry Rock. So I think it's better to have that viewpoint and uh, have somebody from our uh, school district community, if you will, representing us uh, at CSBA. So I will make that in the form of a motion. Uh, as stated. Right. Thank, thank you, Frank. We've got a second for that. Any other comments, questions, thoughts, feedback from the board? I'm in agreement. Okay, wonderful. All right. I well, agree right too. Right. Okay, well, we have a motion and a second, so I'll call for a roll call vote. Ms. Bendita? Uh, yeah, the motion was made by Dan Flores and seconded by Mr. Ibarra, correct? Correct. And if it, would it help to restate the motion? Uh, no, it's fine. I, I got it. Thank you. Okay. Right. I just want to just make sure. Uh, Mr. Ibarra? Yes. Mrs. Haro? Yes. Mr. Flores? Yes. Ms. Torino Hayda? Yes. Ms. Sandoval? Yes. Mr. Fuentes? Yes. Ms. Adigate? Yes. I was just seeing the, the six incumbents, excluding uh, Tom Courtney, I believe. Yes, substituting Mr. Courtney with Mr. Snelling from Ukiah Calumet Joint. Got it. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Well, that item passes uh, unanimously. All right. Our next deferred item is item 5.3. Item 5.3 is approval of a contract renewal for Assistant Superintendent of Educational Services. Uh, we are required to take up this item separately, and so that is why it was deferred. So items before the board, and at this time, I will ask for a motion for approval. So move, Thorin Lojeda. Second that, Israel Fuentes. Thank you. I have a motion and a second for approval of this item. Uh, I will ask for a roll call vote. Ms. Medina. The terms of that contract. Oh, I'm sorry, I did read that out prior to approval. My apologies. Okay. I'll read out the terms of the contract then. And again, these are listed in the agenda item, just for public, uh, for the matter of public information. Uh, the term of the contract is uh, July 1, uh, 2021 through June 30th of 2024. Salary for the contract is $176,063. Work year is 223 days. District provided vehicle for the assist assistant superintendent. Uh, health insurance, the same medical and dental insurance benefits offered to the other certificated management employees sick leave of 14 days per year and retiree health benefits due to the length of the assistant superintendent service with the district the assistant superintendent is vested in the district's retiree health benefits program so those are the terms of the contract and again i will uh, return it to Ms. medina for a roll call vote thank you mr ibarra yes mrs haro yes mr flores yes Ms. Torino hayda yes Ms. sandoval Yes. Mr. Fuentes? Yes. Ms. Adigate? Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you for that. All right. That concludes our action items for this evening. So it takes us to our administrative reports. Um, and at this time, I'll ask if there are any comments or questions that board members may have on our administrative reports for items 6.1 through item 6.5. Any of those items? board members wish to ask a question or provide a comment for okay hearing none we'll move to our updates we do not have a facilities update for this evening and we do not have a business services update for this evening so we'll go right into item 6.8 our ace update and i believe we have ace president mrs christina parachi uh, available for an update <coughs> Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Hello. Hello, esteemed board members, Superintendent Miranda, cabinet members, and members of the audience. My name is Christina Poracci. I have the privilege to serve as the president of the Association of Colton Educators. 
The Association of Colton Educators is ready and willing to work with the district to, to plan a safe return to in-person teaching. In November, the board voted to return to in-person teaching on April 5th. Based on the information we all had at the time, we are optimistic by, that by that date, we will be ready to return. In the last few months, the educators became the pawns in the political arena and the return to in-person teaching became very political. We want to tell you that the Association of Colton Educators have been at the table working with the district since March 2020, working on a plan that at some point we will return to in-person teaching. I know the community is hearing that the news from the news outlets and social media that the big bad teacher unions do not want the students back in school. I want to make it clear that this is not the case in CJUSD. The association has been working with the district to create a plan and to bring our staff and students back to school when it is safe. We have been requesting dates for negotiations and we finally have set at least a negotiation meeting a week. We've been involved at every step of the way. However, no matter how much we want to return, we are still not ready. Looking at the COVID, uh, county COVID dashboard, sadly, our district is into deep, as deep as it can get, purple. The superintendent worked hard to secure vaccines for our district, and at the last hour, the vaccines were taken from CJSD, and in return, it's laughable, but we were allocated 22 vaccines. You heard me right, 22 vaccines. How do you split 22 vaccines to over 1,500 employees? Having said that, here are a few things to think about. If we are ready, if we are returning on April 5th and the state will not cancel testing, we are bringing our students back to in-person teaching during the testing period. Having to make the transition from distance learning to hybrid, the students will have to accommodate to in-person teaching again. The pacing guides to all our curriculum will have to be adjusted since the students will only get synchronous instruction three days at a minimum day schedule. This will be chaotic for educators and for students. I'm not saying it cannot be done, and I'm not saying we are not going to rise to the occasion. What I'm really saying, we need the final decision communicated to the staff as soon as possible. We need to know what's going to happen. If the decision is to continue DL the rest of the year, then we can get back to our regular work and planning for summer school, um, and next year school, school uh, next school year and not focus on hybrid planning which is taking so much time of everyone involved and i want you to know and i'm sure you already know that we have certificated staff and ace leadership involved in every aspect of that planning if the decision is to return on march 5th we want to remind you that we have 21 school days until spring break 29 school sites to be prepared and all curriculum pacing guides to be planned. And just an FYI, FYI, ACE will go dark during spring break. Whatever decision we make, you make, we urge you that you make it as soon as possible and make it public so we can move on. Thank you for your support and dedication. Thank you, Mrs. Prachi, for the update. We appreciate your feedback. And again, as always, uh, the partnership with ACE and our teachers. Um, next item on the agenda is CSC update, but I don't believe we have an update this evening, uh, nor do we have a MAC update. And so that takes us to our ROP update. And right, so I'll ask for either board member Haro, board member Ibarra, would you like to provide us with an update? Uh, I guess I could uh, get started and then uh... I'll refer over to Pat if she wants to add anything to that. We did have a ROP uh, meeting on the 10th last week, 
and um, there were several highlights. Uh, they did talk about uh, uh, working on the Evening of Excellence, which is uh, uh, a ceremonial day that uh, Cryrop uh, does every year. And uh, they're looking to do it, of, of course, virtually, uh, where they honor and they provide uh, uh, a variety of different scholarships to the students who uh, participate in, in the ROP courses in all three of our school districts. So they're very excited to, uh, to announce that they will uh, be having this uh, evening of excellence and uh, uh, they're working on all the, the dates and, and how they're going to deliver it uh, through uh, virtual means. So that was one of the things of discussion. The second, they also, uh, we talked a little bit about the, the Cryrop Foundation, which is, has been uh, um, established uh, a few years back to help with uh, scholarships for students. And uh, one of the things that uh, was, was discussed um, was that uh, they uh, wanted to uh, change the name of the Cryrop uh, Foundation to the Cryrop Educational Foundation, which uh, uh, aligns itself better with what uh, uh, the state and what Cryrop itself uh, wants to be identified with through that foundation. Um, the, the officers were selected and I was uh, selected uh, president of the foundation and uh, Israel uh, Fuentes was also nominated and selected as one of the, the board members for that foundation. And uh, I'll turn it over at this point to Pat if she wants to add anything else. Would you like to add any uh, any updates to the ROP update? Okay, can you hear me now? Sorry, yes. no I'm talking and I didn't realize I was <laughs> muted. Sorry about no that. Um, uh, the other thing that we did was we welcomed three new employees to the Cryrop family. And I just wanted to mention that one of the employees that they uh, hired, she's now the Empl Employment Placement Specialist. She was a former Colton High School uh, Cryrop student, and she her name is Victoria Orozco, and uh, she brought up her time, uh, how much she enjoyed uh, being at Colton High School and also being a Cryrop employee. So it was really nice to see one of our own uh, being hired at Cryrop. So I just wanted to bring that up. Thank you for that. Um, mm -hmm. That's great news on uh, both the uh, employees that were brought on board, but also the foundation. So it's nice to know that we will be represented not only on the board um, for Cryrop, but also on the foundation. Board. So congratulations for that, Mr. Barr and Mr. Fuentes. We appreciate that. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. Um, the next item on our agenda um, is actually our superintendent's communique. So I will turn it over to Dr. Miranda for his communique. Uh, thank you, Board President. Uh, good evening, Board. Uh, uh, good evening, uh, Executive Cabinet and all the members uh, in the virtual world out there. Uh, uh, tonight, uh, just some sharing a lot of great news. Uh, and uh, first, I want to start off uh, this evening just putting a, a plug out there for our annual science and engineering fair. So if you can get to the next slide, uh, Shane, I'd appreciate that. There we go. Is there you see the flyer? Uh, the virtual fair uh, is scheduled to take place uh, this Saturday, uh, February twentieth, from eight to twelve p.m. Uh, the event is uh, online and will include synchronous projects, uh, interviews with judges. Uh, our very own Miss uh, Pat Haro is one of our the judges, so we appreciate that. We're also going to have some uh, asynchronous steam videos uh, and activities for our students to view and participate. Uh, 
while they're waiting to be judged. Uh, so uh, there is going to be a, a public showcase of the project projects available on the day uh, for all our parents, guardians, and the, any community member that wishes to view student work. Uh, and I'll just tell you, uh, in the many years that I've seen the work, uh, some of these projects will just uh, are just outstanding and just uh, incredible. Uh, you will you will need to register uh, for this opportunity. Uh, and so that you're able to attend, um, you can see the registration link, uh, which can also be located in our social media feeds. Uh, this year's science and engineering fair has been made possible by the uh, site uh, science fair coordinators. Uh, so we want to thank them and for their dedication uh, in ensuring that students had the best opportunity to be successful during this process. As a former science teacher, I got to tell you, this really excites me. Uh, especially during the science fair project time and uh, so I look forward to seeing the the projects uh, and so uh, again we're, we're really excited to show off the hard work uh, uh, that the students have put in uh, and also to test their knowledge so all the students out there parents make sure they're ready because they're going to be tested uh, and I'm sure by our judges uh, and so again uh, just encourage you all of you to uh, join the science fair on February 20th uh, and uh, the welcome ceremony uh, will be uh, will be great. And that'll be eight o'clock. Uh, we want to cheer our students on. Again, the annual science uh, and engineering fair. Looking forward to that. Next slide, please. So again, we continue to celebrate our amazing leaders in CJSD, uh, and just wanted to publicly recognize a uh, couple of our standing administrators uh, and site uh, principals here. Uh, and so AXA, the Association of California School Administrators, uh, uh, has recognized two of our uh, principals. This is for region, I believe region 12. Uh, so we're really proud of uh, uh, Principal Jessica Gomez for receiving the AXA Administrator of the Year for Elementary Principal. And then uh, we also want to congratulate uh, Ms. Tiffany Hampton uh, for being selected this year's Continuation uh, Educational Options Administrator of the Year. Uh, this is a uh, year, it's gonna be a, a virtual celebration just like many celebrations are. Uh, and the event is scheduled the evening of May 10th uh, with uh, details forthcoming. Again, we're so proud of the hard work, dedication and the service uh, to the students from uh, both these outstanding administrators uh, and their service to the community, to the families. Uh, especially our students and, and the hard work. So on behalf of the Board of Education, myself, uh, just we want to thank uh, them and AXA for recognizing the outstanding leaders uh, that we have. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, reading, our reading con, our fourth annual reading con, if you can believe that, uh, that's happening uh, pretty soon here. So we want to invite all of you to please join us for our fourth annual reading con. Uh, this year's event, uh, it's going to be virtual, just just like a lot of the events are. Uh, and we're going to have two separate days uh, where people can join us for uh, the fun, lots of fun. Uh, and so the first day is scheduled for Wednesday, March 3rd from 3 to 5 p.m. And the second day is scheduled for Saturday. March 6 from 10 to 2.30 p.m. Uh, the links to register for the event are on the district website and also on our social media feeds. Uh, the theme for this year's event is Camp Reads More. So uh, this year's reading con will be online as I stated before and will include uh, professional authors like we've done in the past and storytellers, including bilingual authors too, superheroes. I know Spider-Man is gonna be there and more. So we will have uh, craft activities for those who register prior to the event. Space for the craft activities is limited. Uh, students will, will pick up the supplies ahead of time. Instructions on where and when to pick up the supplies will be sent to students after they register. Uh, so please come and join the fun with the community and explore the wonder with reading. I have to just give uh, just uh, Jackie Paul uh, uh, just a, uh, a shout out for all the work she's putting into this event uh, and, and putting this together. I know that 
For a lot of our board members, this is near and dear to the heart, just like the science fair. Uh, reading is so important in literacy, and we want to continue to uh, put that at the forefront in our district. So uh, again, uh, fourth annual reading con. And then the last uh, that I have uh, for this evening on my communique is, um, the next slide please, is of course, uh, hashtag CGSD cares. That's been uh, the theme for this year, uh, as all of you know. So it cannot leave without uh, sharing something, another event, another uh, uh, staple to our district and something that we that we really are proud of is our, of course our community cabinet and uh, we will be having uh, our next community cabinet uh, third one for this school year uh, is going to be on Wednesday March 10th uh, again Wednesday March 10th and we're going to be hosting two sessions one's going to be in English and one is going to be in Spanish uh, so the Spanish session will begin at 10 a.m. And then the English session will follow, and that will start at 11:30. And our our theme and and what we're going to do is we're going to be presenting uh, a uh, state of the district to the community, uh, providing information um, and that uh, to the community about uh, the school reopening plan, uh, the safety measures, and and much much more to uh, to really address the reopening that all of you are wondering what's happening with that. Uh, so please join us. The link uh, slash call in information will be uh, forthcoming uh, to all of you on our social media feeds and our district website. Uh, so that is, I believe, it for me this evening. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to share uh, all these wonderful events and celebrations and uh, bright spots. So uh, I will turn it back over to uh, Board President uh, uh, Flores. Thank you, Mr. Flores. Thank you, Dr. Miranda, for the uh, for the communique. Uh, next on our agenda is board member comments. So we'll go ahead and turn it over to the board member for their board members for their comments, and we'll begin with board member Ibarra. Thank you, Dan. Uh, first of all, I want to take this opportunity to welcome everyone who's here at the board meeting, and um, uh, I just want to start off by uh, thanking all the staff and uh, everyone that has continued to make our science fairs uh, as popular and successful as they've been over the years. I know that this year it's, it's a little bit of a different dynamics, but uh, nevertheless, I know that it's going to come across uh, as another excellent event. So I just wanted to offer my thanks to all those who uh, are making it possible. I also want to congratulate our uh, access uh, AXA uh, award winners uh, Jessica Gomez and Tiffany Hampton uh, we're very proud of all our staff and uh, these are just two individuals who continue to excel over the years and uh, we as a district are very very fortunate to have them here with us so congratulations to them again um, our our read, uh, reading con, uh, the fourth annual, it's uh, something that I know that many of the students and the community parents look forward to. And uh, our, our staff, again, has done an excellent job in, in preparing and putting uh, this uh, event together. And I just want to take the opportunity, too, to congratulate and thank all those who have their hand in this and will make this event uh, a memorable event as well. And uh, one final thank you to all those who have worked hard and uh, put together our, our Black History uh, Month events. And I just want to take my hat off to them and uh, just let them know that uh, educating our youth on all different type of diversities uh, cultural histories, events, uh, accomplishments. It only makes us all stronger as, as individuals. And there's nothing better than uh, experience and knowledge to just promote uh, equality. So I just want to go ahead and say thank you for that. 
And with that, I'll turn it over to you, uh, Dan. Great. Thanks so much, Frank, for that um, for those comments. Our next board member comments will be with board member Thorin Ahead. Did you say Thorin Ojeda? Yes. I'm sorry, I did not hear that correctly. <laughs> no worries. <clears throat> A couple of comments this evening. First of all, I've attended a couple of workshops this week on <clears throat> the issues related to returning safely to school, one through ACTS and one through school services. There's just such a huge number of issues that look at, and I thank our, our cabinet, <clears throat> Dr. Miranda, for looking at all these issues and, and working with our unions to come up with a safe plan for all of us to to return to school and I look forward to further discussion on that down the road but I there were some issues that I had after being in school all the years I was working on a site there were issues that I hadn't even thought about that we have to take into consideration so there's just so much that impacts this decision we want to make sure that it's the right decision for everyone before we go ahead and and do that secondly I personally reached out to our AXA uh, administrators of the year. I served a long time in AXA and I'm so proud when people with my organization uh, are able to <clears throat> honor and recognize those people who are recognized by their peers and nominated for these positions. So I am very grateful that we have the type and quality of administrators we do in Colton Joint Unified that we have two recipients this year. Um, I thank you for the nominations. I think with the committee that we selected six participants and that I'm very grateful that we put Mike Snellings on there. I think he has so much knowledge to bring to the table to help with making decisions that it was a, a, a a real very intelligent motion to to include Mike in that. So I with that I do just say thank you to everyone for being out there. One last thing I do want with the Black Lives Matter comments that I heard this evening, I'm so grateful that we've reached our communities reaching out to us and letting the, us know how much they appreciate our work towards becoming more diverse in our instruction and in our environment uh, to help boys and girls as they grow up and hopefully help our community and recognizing the importance of diversity and how that does make us stronger in our communities and in, in which is our lives and the lives of everyone. So thank you for the district people who put this all together. I know it's a, been a great labor of love for a lot of people to be able to go out and I was very happy to hear how well received it's been within our community. And for all of the families, I appreciate um, how much cooperation we've had with our distance learning. I know it's not easy, um, but I think our kids are doing a really good job with it because we have teachers who are putting so much into it and administrators and, and staff members at the schools who are helping make this work. So. Thank you to everyone, please be safe. Let's hope we get more vaccinations out there and we can get people in a safe environment soon. Thank you. Thank you for that, board member, Corinne Ojeda. Uh, now I'd like to invite uh, Vice President Adeguin. Thank you. Okay, as you know, uh, we're scheduled to reopen schools using the hybrid model on April 5th. Our next regular board meeting is March 18th. That's one day before schools go on spring break for two weeks. Uh, and after that, um, after the two weeks, April 5th is the following Monday. This concerns me for the, for the following reasons. Um, our staff continues to prepare our classrooms for in-person instruction for when it is deemed safe 
and for uh, when our teachers and staff um, have been had the opportunity to be vaccinated. The good news is that the County Board of Supervisors has made it a priority for to vaccinate educators with the ultimate goal of getting students back in the classroom. Although the rollout was pretty slow, I think we have gained momentum and things are moving along. What concerns me is this, however, that with April 5th timeline upon us, it is unlikely that teachers and staff will receive both doses of the vaccine by this date. I know that teachers and staff on their own have gone to have found websites to get vaccinated and, and they're pursuing that. Our district is continuing to work with Arrowhead to offer dedicated vaccines to our staff. Um, but it's still, the concern is that April 5th is just around the corner. And, you know, it's just unlikely it, you know, for the, both vaccine, vaccines to be given. Um, so what I would like to propose, is it possible to get a consensus from the board this evening to schedule a special board meeting to update the community and uh, on the data and on the reopening plan. Um, this will give staff opportunity to review the data, update the plan and continue negotiations with our unions. So I'm wondering if, is it, if it's possible to, um, to do that, to maybe schedule a special board meeting as soon as possible. I know we have one scheduled, uh, I believe March 4th. Fifth, I'm sorry, I don't have that thing, uh, but exact date. Yes, March 4th. Uh, it could be that board meeting or it could be another uh, a set date. But I think it's important to let our community and uh, our staff and our employees uh, know as soon as possible so that they can plan. Dan, can I say something? Sure. Uh, <clears throat> this is Ms. Loring Ojeda. I totally agree. I think uh, even waiting till the fourth is too long. I, I think that we have enough information. Um, I think if we scheduled a short meeting next week and had all the information presented to us, we could make a, some kind of a decision as to what what our next step would be. I, would, I'm, I suggest next week. What, what, and then and I think that's a good idea. What we'll do, because I want to I want to make sure we're obviously um, you know, adhering to the Brown Act, and we can certainly give direction to the superintendent to work on uh, a special meeting and provide a follow up to, to, to all of us, because this we are there is a timeline involved. So um, I think if we can formulate that in the um, in, in giving direction to the superintendent to work on a prospective special meeting, I know that we have. A special meeting scheduled already on March 4th, if I'm not mistaken, uh, for another matter. But I believe that that could certainly be uh, flipped into um, a meeting on this if need be. But why don't we, if it, if it, uh, if there's consensus from the board, give that direction to the superintendent to work on so that he has the authority to identify a prospective special meeting date so we can we can address this uh, in enough time. I think that'd be a great idea. Okay. So the better to let people know. Great. Okay. Uh, any okay. objections from board members? And no, no, I believe we're getting an update um, from yes. cabinet in regard to school opening anyway. So I think it would be good for us to wait till we get that update and then we can definitely give them the direction to, to schedule a special board meeting or even add it to the beginning of the fourth, whatever we need to do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree right. with that. Okay. Great. All right. And, and we'll, and I'm sure Dr. Miranda will certainly keep us um, abreast as he has been on, um, and he's well aware as we are at the timelines that are involved. So uh, the time is of the essence uh, because there isn't a lot left if we're hoping to be able to reopen uh, in early April. So thank you for that. And thank you, uh, Vice President Adegain, for, for raising that issue. It's an important one. The timeline is critical. Uh, we'll go ahead and go to our next board member comment. That's all right. I'd like to invite board member Haro to provide her comments. Um, just really, I have, um, I want to <clears throat> congratulate um, Mrs. Gomez and Ms. Hampton 
um, on their um, AXA awards. Um, we're very proud of the people we have working in Colton Joint Unified School District um, from our certificate, our, our teachers and our classified and of course our management. And so they make us proud and it's good to see them being um, not just us recognizing them, but others recognizing the great things that they do. I also, um, <clears throat> this is the 33rd annual uh, science fair that we're having this weekend. And um, <clears throat> I look forward to, the, I look forward to, but um, um, uh, the, the new format to see how this is going to work. And, um, but I also want to say thank you to uh, our two main coordinators, Danielle Fernandez and Kim Flynn for all they do to make, to make sure that this year's science fair happened. And um, I know it wasn't easy. I mean, I know a regular science fair putting it on is not easy. So let alone a virtual one. So very appreciative. Um, my husband and I look forward to judging. This uh, is now my 23rd year uh, with science fair and it's always such a pleasure to see what these kids come up with. So I look forward to that. And the last thing I just want to read something um, here in Colton. I know that, you know, we know that distance learning is not the, uh, the best way to learn and we're doing our best. Just like all the other school districts uh, surrounding us and the um, all over the country, but it's very disturbing uh, when you read, whether it be in the newspaper or see news uh, articles uh, on social media <clears throat> where other school districts continually say things about distance learning in a negative way. Uh, and in, in that I mean where they're talking about their teachers. I'm very proud to work in a district that we truly, truly value our employees and that we constantly, um, the board that I happen to be very fortunate to be on, we all, every one of us constantly sings the praises of our staff and how important they are to the education of our students and how valued they are. And with that, I want to read um, a letter that I received because it speaks volumes. It says, I have been reading a lot of stories about school board members from other districts, bad mouthing teachers and saying that they aren't working or that they are being lazy. Whenever I read these stories, I get so angry, but mostly sad because I know we are working harder than ever to make sure our students are getting what they deserve. I know that I have worked more hours outside of my contract time at night and every weekend to make lessons for my students on Seesaw and to plan what we are going to do so learning via the computer can be fun for them. Today, when I was reading another article about a school board member from Nevada, it dawned on me that I have never heard any negative things from all of you. All I have heard is positive and affirming things. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for this. And if you can let your fellow board members know that one of their teachers appreciates their kind, wor their kind words and support, I would appreciate it. Thank you for all you do for us. So I wanted to read that to my fellow board members because I was asked to and um, say that I truly am very proud to be part of a district that honestly and truly supports their employees. Thank you. Thank you for that board member Haro. Um, appreciate you sharing that, uh, that email with us. Uh, next, I'd like to call on board member Fuentes. Thank you, uh, board president uh, Flores. Well, once again, like all of my colleagues have said, thank you for coming out uh, virtually this evening. Uh, it's great to have each and every one of you present. All of our administrators and teachers that are present also, thank you very much for taking your time this evening to be in, being out here this evening to hear our board meeting. 
uh, to the teacher, the letter that was just read to us. Thank you. Thank you very much. It, it encourages us to continue to support our teachers every day. We're here to do that. Nothing negative. Our teachers are working hard. I've had the opportunity to pop into some of the classrooms and I see the amazing things that our teachers are doing in elementary, middle and high school. So thank you. Thank you for the bottom of my heart for all your hard work. I know it's uh, we've always said it, you know, we this is not the uh, uh, fun, fun sometimes, but a lot of times this is because we care about our students and we want to make sure that our students continue to learn, continue to be successful in life as they continue in their education. So once again, teachers and all of our administrators, all of our staff, uh, classified, everyone, thank you very much for being part of Colton Joint Unified School District. Also want to congratulate Ms. Gomez and Ms. Hampton for Administrators of the Year. Thank you, ladies. You guys are doing an awesome job. Thank you very much. Very appreciative. And uh, I see I see uh, what's going on in your schools, uh, Slover, uh, uh, you know, I see the amazing things you ladies are doing, so I appreciate you very much. Also wanted to talk a little bit about the Reading Con uh, that's coming up. Don't miss out. Uh, a lot of great opportunities, a lot of a lot of reading that we're going to be doing. That's something that I've, I ever since it started, I it's been a big uh, a passion of mine to be part of it. And I will be reading books, probably a bilingual bilingual uh, book uh, to the kids that evening. So. I'm going to have a lot of fun. The 33rd annual uh, science fair. Also, I've had the opportunity to uh, be a, a alongside of uh, Mr. and Miss Harrow as they are out there judging. And I love seeing those projects, seeing those things that our students are doing. The intelligence that comes the the intelligence that comes out of their brain to do these science uh, science uh, fair uh, projects are amazing. Uh, amazing to see. So it's fun to see. So don't miss out. Uh, be there at 8, 8 a.m. virtually, you know, and uh, don't miss out. Also wanted to say thank you to all of uh, our, uh, excuse me, I wanted to say thank you to our board members, you know, to my colleagues for all the hard work that they do too, and to our superintendent, the executive cabinet, everyone at the uh, district office. And I also want to thank Joanne Medina. For her hard work, she's always out there doing, sending emails, letting us know what's going on. She sets up for our meetings here. She reads the public comments. She had to read 15 public comments today. So I appreciate you, uh, Ms. Medina, for all you do uh, for our, us as a board and uh, everything you do for our district. Thank you very much. I wanted to also uh, just co uh, commend Ms. Alejandra and, and Gil Diaz, our language uh, support uh, people uh, for the dual immersion. It's great to see that they're, they're out there letting our communities know about the new schools that are be uh, teaching uh, dually or the dual immersion uh, next year. So I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. So I appreciate you both uh, for your hard work and your team uh, for bringing that out every day. Also, one thing I wanted to bring to the table was uh, last year, our parents at DLAC brought uh, some concerns to the board. And I just wanted to see if there was a follow up uh, for them. Uh, you know, the, every year they bring uh, and they present the concerns that they have as, as a committee, as a, a group of uh, EL parents. And I just wanted to bring that to the table and maybe in board correspondence or something you could send us uh, something if we have followed up with them and shared anything with them. I know the pandemics changed a lot of things, but if there was something that we could uh, Maybe something that was done from those concerns that the DLAC parents brought to us last year. And I just want to end with uh, a quote for this evening. If I can get my notes up here. It says, fear is a reaction. Courage is a decision. Sir Winston Churchill. Have a great evening. God bless you all. Thank you, Board Member Fuentes, for that. Thank you. Uh, Board Member Sandoval. Thank you, Board President. Um, I just want to say thank you to all for being here. Um, congratulations to Mrs. Gomez and Mrs. Hampton. And congratulations to Slover's presentation to Jennifer and Tricia. It was really great. Um, also, thank you for the 33rd Annual Science and Engineer, even though it is virtual, something different. 
but thank you for bringing for doing this and also for the fourth annual family reading con um and that's it thank you thank you for that board member sandoval um i'm going to go ahead and go back to board member thorin ojeda you had one more comment you want to share i do um i think all my years at school sites <clears throat> have made me really uh, mindful of the essence of and the importance of the time issue that we're looking at right now for a decision um I know people are really stressed out. They're wondering what we're going to be doing. And I think the sooner we make a decision and we let them know what our plan will be, the better for them. I would ask that we consider uh, asking Dr. Miranda if he would be able to do a presentation for us next week so people can be more on board with what we're doing and what our decision will be to plan the rest of the year. Um, with vacation coming up, I just think we owe it to them if we can possibly do it. The sooner, the better. ACE has asked for that. Uh, talk to teachers who really would like to know, are we going back? Are we not going to go back? What is our plan? And I think I would like to request that we ask Dr. Miranda if we could work something out for next week and have a special meeting. Thank you. Board President, if I just may um, just add something. If it's appropriate. Yes, please, please Dr. Miranda. I, I plan on providing an update to the board uh, in closed session. Perhaps at that time would be appropriate to uh, have that discussion. Yes, and that would be fine. And 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 I would agree, um, obviously, the importance of it. Uh, as the as the board president, uh, we I have the authority to call for a special meeting with uh, obviously in coordination with the superintendent. So um, we can have that conversation, um, give direction, and, and certainly if need be, I think call a special meeting as early as, as next week. We only need 24 hours notice for a special board meeting, so we can turn a meeting around fairly quickly. Obviously, uh, we want to make sure that we uh, notice it so everyone that is interested in participating and hearing um, the discussion will be made aware, but technically speaking, just in terms of the Brown Act, we can call a special meeting within 24 hours. So. I think that's something worth looking at, um, even as early as next week, I would agree. Mr. Flores, that, that's great. That what my concern would be is if we'd made a decision to have a special meeting and people hearing tonight didn't know that we were going to possibly do that, and we just want to be as transparent as possible. So um, that would be great if we could do that. I agree. And we can utilize, um, obviously, our, our social media network and other means to get the word out that we would be holding a special meeting. That would be very important to us. And, and our and employee associations, of course, who participate. So, great. Thank you for that, uh, uh, Board Member Thorin Ojeda. Uh, I, I don't have any comments tonight myself, other than I want to thank everybody for joining us. Obviously, um, we're doing this virtually, so it can be a challenge at times. So thank you for staff for making this happen. Um, and again, echo the concerns and questions about the return to school question that we need some resolution to, and there's a lot of factors that go into that including vaccinations. I think that's the most pressing question. And then the timeline that's associated with that. So that's certainly not lost on us. At this time, we'll go ahead and adjourn this session, uh, this open session of the meeting, and uh, we will go ahead and reconvene in closed session. So we will go ahead and adjourn um, open session and head into closed. We'll see you guys there. Thank yes. you very much, Desiree. Thank you. Have a nice evening. And Owen, you have to go into that other link for the closed session. Is that separate? Okay. Okay, Shane, I'll let you know when they're back into it. No problem.
We're back. Yes, we are. Welcome back. <laughs> I drank a cup of coffee. <laughs> Yeah, well, I won't say what I'm going to drink, but I am done here. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're recording this. Yes. Coca-Cola, that's my favorite. Diet Coke. Hey. We have Miss Adigin on. We have Miss Sandoval on. We have Mr. Flores on. We have Mr. Ibarra on. We have Mr. Fuentes on. One, two, three, four, five. Real quick, Joanne, and we'll get going here, but I, just uh, FYI, when we get to that item 10.4, there was a misprint, a typo on uh, that item with respect to the heading about it was It's a release and reassign, not a, not a, yeah, anyway, I'll make that note when we attempt to that. In. Okay, okay, thank you, Mr. Flores, I appreciate it. We have everybody on? Uh, we have five board members on. Uh, Ms. Thorin Ojeda just joined us. And Ms. Harrow just joined us. We have all seven board members on. Great. Thank you for that. All right. We'll go ahead and reconvene then uh, our meeting here in open session. A uh, few items that we need to address. The first one is item 10.1, student discipline reinstatement for 2020, excuse me, for school year 2021. There was one student readmission presented in closed session in accordance with California Ed Code 48916, an expulsion order shall remain in effect until the governing board in a manner described in this article orders the readmission of a pupil. One student has been expelled from the Colorado Unified School District for a violation of California Ed Code 48900 or 48915. The student met with an administrator in the Department of Student Services. And upon review, the student has completed their plan of rehabilitation as directed by the board and the student is eligible for readmission. Is there a motion to approve the readmission of the student as presented? So moved, Thorne Ojeda. Again, Pat Harrow. Great. I have a motion by Thorne Ojeda, second by Board Member Harrow. I'll call for a roll call vote, please, Ms. Medina. Mr. Ibarra? Yes. Mrs. Harrow? Yes. Mr. Flores? Yes. Ms. Thorne Ojeda? Yes. Ms. Sandoval? Yes. Mr. Fuentes? Yes. Ms. Adigin? Yes. Thank you. Great. Thank you for that. Uh, next item is item 10.2, approval of non-reelection of probationary certificated employees yeah. for the 21-22 school year. Wow. Um, no. On a motion uh, in closed session by board oh, member yeah. Ojeda. Teachers are, yeah. And a second by board member oh, Adigin. Yeah. I know. And carried on a 7-0 uh, approval. Um, the board approved non reelection of the following probationary certificated employees. Uh, employee ID number 12855, physician music teacher. And again, uh, Ms. Medina, that was on a 7 0 vote. Item 10.4 adoption of resolution number 2139 to release and reassign certificated administrative employee for the 21-22 school year. On a motion by board member, uh, board president Flores, myself, and seconded by board member Ibarra, uh, and carried on a 7-0 vote. Uh, the board took action to issue notice to uh, to, to the principal uh, high school that shall be released and reassigned another administrative position for the 21-22 school year. The board directed the superintendent uh, or his designee to serve notice on the Affected employee. And again, that was a 7 0 vote unanimously approved. Thank you. All right, that is the last item of business for today's meeting. Thank you all. It was a little bit of a long one, but we got a lot done. So I appreciate everybody's time and patience and enjoy the rest of your evening. Everybody stay safe. We are adjourned. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Be safe.